Tip to Live Remover Masterclass. Um, some of you may be doing this already. Some of you might be uh, involved with uh, inclusive delivery. And when we talk about inclusive delivery, I'm going to be talking specifically about disability today um, and how we can engage the people with disability. The background is mainly going to be how we engage them to start with. Um, so how do we get them involved in our in our activities? Then once we've got them involved, how do we support them? Um, how can we how can we change what we do to meet their needs? Um, and then we're going to go through some the inclusive uh, spectrum. And then we're going to put some videos in there as well and some ideas um, of how we can do it. If you are already working with people with disabilities um, and you've got experience with this, then again, please use the chat box for your ideas, what you've done, how you've done it, and build on the stuff that we're talking about as well. And that'd be really useful. So the first thing I want you to do in the chat box is what is disability? OK, so just put down in the chat box what you think a disability is. Let's give you a minute or two just to do that. That'd be brilliant. I don't seem to have a chat box on my screen. Yeah, me either. No chat box? No, I haven't got one. No, it just says show participants, but that's it. Hmm. it. It may be due to the to the number that did this yesterday. So if you can talk, then obviously you can you can do that. It'd be great, but it should be a little speech problem. If it's not there, um, it might be because that's it. Capacity, I think. Okay. Is that all right, everybody? I've got you participants. Oh, so Beth just put, I found logging out and joining again, showed a chat box. So well, it might I've be something you need to do. Yeah, it might be worth it. Beth just said she did that and she found a chat box. Okay. So if you want to just try that before we move on. Yeah, we'll do it But if now. not, yeah, if not, then as George said, maybe just open up the mics and we can talk. Okay. Oliver, thanks for that. Yeah, physical, emotional learning difficulties, mental condition, disabilities where it lim limits their abilities, restricts everyday activities. Yeah, some good stuff in there. And again, what we've got to remember is with disability is it's not always visible. Um, and quite rightly, we put in there, you've got learning disabilities, emotional, mental health. Um, and some of these people might not even consider themselves to be disabled, uh, as far as they're concerned. Um, but it's not always the people who uh, might be in wheelchairs or amputees um, that are struggling or visually impaired or auditory impaired. Um, there is a lot of other disabilities that uh, we can't see. But like I say, they probably don't even realise and don't even see themselves as being disabled at all. They just see themselves as a pers everyday person as we all are, walking around, doing what they do very, very well. So we have to make, take that into consideration and be very careful with the words that we use when we talk about um, disability um, to people. But some really good stuff coming in the chat box. Laura, I like that disability is social, mental and physical. It's absolutely right. That social thing is really important. Not a lot of people always want to go out and it's a lot of isolation, especially when you talk about it at the moment. It might affect people long term, um, that I, this isolation we're going through. Um, so the longer this goes on, when people aren't seeing each other, there is a possibility that they, they could then go into an isolation mode themselves long term and not have that ability to communicate with people, which we know has a very detrimental long term effect on people. So, yeah, it is definitely worth something to think about and considering. So a slide here, what is inclusivity? The act of creating environments in which any individual group can be and feel welcomed respected, supported and valued to fully participate. Um, an inclusive and welcoming climate embraces differences and offers respect in words and actions for all people. Quite a powerful statement on there, and it's one that we've got to be wary of um, when we talk about uh, inclusivity. It should be welcoming. Um, people with disabilities, whether it's uh, they're easily seen or whether we can't see them, are probably battling a lot themselves already and to come into a group or an activity where they don't feel welcome or supported or, or respected is going to be another challenge for them something they probably don't want 
and something that might stop them reoccurring uh, and re-engaging back into the activities and groups that you do. So it's really important we do make them feel welcome and respected in what they do. So in the chat box, how would you how would you do this? How would you welcome them? How would you make them feel respected and supported and valued? Put some ideas in the chat box. So what have we got coming in? How would you make them to feel welcome, respected and supported? <coughs> Any ideas? If you want to open up on the mic as well, engage them. Yeah, Bradley, definitely. How would you engage them, Bradley? When we say engage, it's quite an easy word. How would we engage them? Being friendly, approachable. Yep. Could That's you adapt really your lesson? Could you adapt your lesson to suit them? So like if they're in a wheelchair, make it so that everyone's sitting down, or if they they yep. can't necessarily run and get out easily, make them all walk. Yep, absolutely. And I think there is that. Um, and we've got to think about the environment we're in. Um, if you're out in the playground, it might not be that easy for everybody to sit down. Um, depending on, on where you are in a sports hall, it might be easier. Um, but also, uh, people in wheelchairs don't always want to feel that the lesson or the people are adapting to them. They might just want to be totally included in, in what you're doing. So if people are fully able to, to walk around and to run around, they might be quite happy with that because it makes them feel um, included into that session rather than feeling special. Um, so, yeah, uh, just something else to think about. Treating the same as the rest of the group. Yeah, exactly, Heather. Um, they want to be engaged. They don't want to be isolated. They don't want to feel that they're different to everybody else. They're not. They have abilities. And one thing we have to think about when we talk, when we work with people with, with disabilities, whether they're visual or, or not visual disabilities, it is about their ability, what they can do, not their disability. We don't focus on their disability. Um, they don't want it to be highlighted um, and, and we should certainly shouldn't highlight it. We look at what they can do, what they are good at. Um, and I don't know if anybody's ever played, and I, I raise this a few times um, when I deliver these workshops. Um, has anybody ever played um, wheelchair basketball or wheelchair rugby? Just drop a thumbs up in, in, the, uh, in the chat box if you have. Yeah, Laura, how hard was it? If anybody's done it, just let me know how, how difficult they find. Yeah, James, Katie. Yeah, it was difficult. I've also um, I've got a qualification in wheelchair tennis as well that we used to yeah. do, um, which was actually really interesting to find out actually how difficult it was for them, um, but also made us better as coaches because it, we understood it more and we understood what they went like what they had to do. Um, so it allowed our coaching style to be different as well. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? It it really is hard. And and once you've got involved in some of some of those sports, even things like just you know boccia um, or, or table cricket, um, things like that, just to, to do them yourselves, you realise actually it's, we think they they're adapted to make it easier for them, but they are quite challenging and quite difficult. And, and a lot of people who are are um, able-bodied do struggle um, to meet that to meet those needs um, and to do the same um, sport in the same sort of high intensity um, that they do. So it is definitely worth um, trying it out if you haven't done at all, just to understand. Goal ball, yeah, is a good one, uh, but it is difficult. You're right, Beth. It is difficult. Um, Definitely. Even things like, I mean, um, sitting volleyball. I don't know whether you've ever tried that, but that is is really hard to understand these sports and these activities. Put yourselves in their shoes. Um, gives you a better understanding of actually how you can make them feel welcomed and respected, um, and support them more. So, like I say, if you haven't done any of those, definitely give it a go, um, just to understand where they are and what you're doing. Okay. Hopefully this video is going to work and you see and uh, you want to hear the noise. If you don't at all, just um, drop something in the chat box um, and we'll uh, we'll get it sorted out for you. But this is about the top 10 principles. So I said right at the beginning, let's talk about how we engage them. We can't just expect people with disabilities making it inclusive just to turn up on your doorstep. There's got to be a reason they want to come. 
There's got to be a reason they feel comfortable and want to be engaged and meeting their needs. So this is done with Activity Alliance, um, one of the organisations I do tutoring for. Um, and it's talking about the top 10 principles, how to engage people with disabilities. It's about just under four minutes long. Um, so have a sit back, have a listen. We say if you can't hear anything, please let me know. Talk to me. 10 principles. For millions of people up and down the country, being active plays an important role in us staying fit and healthy. But a lot of disabled people told us that the activities are not always right for them. So with their support, we developed 10 principles. These can help sport providers to deliver more appealing and inclusive opportunities for disabled people. So my friend Gordon can go from here to here. Principle one, my channels. Like most people, I use social media and keep an eye on local groups. And I always flick to the local paper. So use the communication channels I pay attention to and trust to promote your event. Principle two my locality. Driving halfway across town or sitting on a bus for an hour can be a big barrier for some disabled people. The closer your event is to me, in a venue I know, the more likely I am to attend. Principle three, me, not my impairment. Disability is often used as a catch-all phrase, but some people do not identify with the term and would not consider themselves to be disabled. So to reach more people, choose your words carefully in your promotions. Principle four, my values. Staying healthy, being independent and enjoying time with my friends are just some of the things I value in life. Linking your activities to things that motivate me will mean I'm more likely to get involved. Principle five, my life story. As I get older, my values and the things I enjoy changes, but I still want to stay active. Mix it up and try something new to keep me interested. No running! Oh, come on, Rick! Principle six, reassure me. Trying a new activity can be daunting for some people. Videos, virtual tours and open days are some of the ways you can reassure disabled people that opportunities are right for them. Should we go and have a game? Yeah. Principle seven, include me. If I've made the effort to come along, I don't want to feel sidelined. Providers should make sure that people of all ability levels feel included in sessions. Nice one. Next catch wins. Principle eight, listen to me. Right, today Chris, we're going to introduce new exercise, dumbbell shoulder press, until your back straight, stomach tight. Listen to me. I feel more confident about taking part when I've had the opportunity to discuss my needs or concerns. So be approachable and offer me a time or place to talk privately. Right, here we go, Chris. Can you give me ten? Ten? I'm exhausted. Principle nine. Welcome me. You only get one chance at a first impression. A bad experience is hard to forget. So help me enjoy my time and you'll probably see me again. As we're coming to the next stretch, we're going to welcome Chris. Hi, Chris. Principle ten. Show me. Nothing beats first-hand experience, so engage with disabled people already taking part in your activity to help them spread the word and promote it. These 10 principles are just the beginning, and you're probably doing some of these already. By embedding these into your work, disabled people will have access to more appealing and inclusive opportunities. Find out more about the 10 principles visit www.activityalliance.org.uk. What are people's thoughts on that? Just drop some stuff in the, the chat box or open up the mics. Is there anything there you're doing already? Is there anything there that you think actually we could probably do this to, to help engage more people with disabilities into, into our groups? Drop anything in, in the chat box and that uh, and your feedback would be, be great.
Nothing coming through. No thoughts. Oh, here we go. David, brilliant, helpful. That's good. It is a good video. Three or four minutes long. I think Activity Alliance has done a really good job with that. Um, this was only launched two years ago um, with them. And um, yeah, they've, they've worked really hard of understanding how, how disabled people really want to get involved um, into activities. Bradley, James, yeah, you did a lot already. Yeah, you're right, Bradley. It is about positive outlook, um, and that's what it is. Um, if you haven't worked with people with disabilities before, I found that coaches lack a lot of confidence because they're worried about their, their disability, um, and that's what they focus on. And, and um, we shouldn't be. We should be looking at what they can do. And who's the best people to, to know what they can do? Is it us as coaches? Is it the specialists or is it them? Just drop something in the chat box. Let me know. What do you think? Is it us as coaches? Is it the specialists or is it them? Who who has who knows best? Yeah, Beth. Spot on. It's them. Don't be afraid to ask them. Yeah, David. Yep. Don't be afraid to ask them. What can you do? How can I help? Um, what provisions do you need? Because that's what they want. You know, you would probably want the same if you went to a club for the first time. You want to know what you're doing, how how you're gonna how it's gonna work. So don't think it's anything different. It's great, James. Brilliant. Yeah, it is a useful video. I say these are recorded. So, um, but Activity Alliance, um, which uh, is a great um, is a governing body for disability sports in the UK. It, it, they've got some really really um, good people there um, that will support and help what we do um so hopefully on your screens you will see um the inclusion spectrum uh, and again just give me a thumbs up if you have seen this or open on the mic mics if you've seen this inclusion spectrum it has different forms this is the latest one and um, this came out uh, again two years ago great stuff um so what it's it's been designed by ken black and pam stevenson uh, Ken's had about 30 odd years working with people uh, in the inclusion um, area, wrote many books, um, works at Loughborough University as a lecturer there as well, um, and same with Pam, and, and they've looked at how we can engage uh, people with disabilities um, into uh, physical activities or sport. Um, and this is, this is the spectrum, again, it's, it's come up in various forms, this is the latest one. So open, modified, parallel, um, Pacific it is the four sort of air models that we work around for activities to include people and to increase their, their abilities into different sports. It's all centred around the participant, as you can see in the middle. Um, but you, it doesn't work in a scaffolding area, so you can skip between uh, open, modified, parallel, Pacific at any time. You don't have to go to open, modified, parallel, and Pacific, and vice versa. You can move around them. But the participant is the most important person. Round the outside, you'll see setting, activity, impairment, and ability. They, those um, four will then distinguish which you will use. So depending on the setting, um, we'll decide whether you use an open or parallel or modified activity. Depending on the activity you want to do, again, you then choose whether it's going to be a parallel, modified, specific or an open activity. And depending on their ability as well, you would also look at that. So the model is quite a fluid model um, and can move in either way. And it helps us set up um, what we can do with abilities uh, within different physical activities. But all of these stem from the STEP model. Um, I presume a lot of you have heard of the STEP model. Again, put your thumbs up in the chat room if you've heard of the STEP model. Some people call it STEPS, most people call it STEP. Um, but hopefully most of you have heard that. So again, just pop your thumbs up. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura. You heard of the STEP model. So we're just going to break this down. Great stuff. Katie, Ellie, James, Bradley. Good thumbs up. So STEP. Can anybody tell me what the S is for? Put it in the chat room. What is the S for? Remember this back in your days. Space, brilliant. Yeah. 
Yeah, space, Jordan space, brilliant. So move on to T. Oh. Simply on the mics. Who said that? Tom. Oh, yeah. Brilliant, James. Thanks. Task. And then the E. Equipment. Equipment, yep. And progression. The P, what was that? Progression. Uh, I'm not going to say no. I'm quite hard people. on these. People, yay. <clears throat> so people. So that's a step process. Space, task, equipment and people. So that's pretty small. You're probably not going to see that very well, but it is recorded. And if anybody wants these particularly, I can I can certainly send them over um, what they are. So I'm just going to read through a few of these for you. Uh, space. What do we do about space? OK, we can change it by increasing or decreasing the playing area. We can change the distances that are covered. We can change the areas or targets. Um, we can change the speed of the game by closing the space down or increasing it vary the size of the target area we can also change the shape of that space as well um this is one thing i'm trying to get a lot of coaches that i work with to realize is we don't have to have everything in a circle or a triangle or oh, sorry a rectangle or a square let's vary the space let's change the shape of the space um why why can't we have a triangle why can't we have a, a diamond shape you know it, that shape will then dictate um, the challenges for the participants. It doesn't have to be a set square or rectangle. Um, so let's be a little bit more creative in what we do about that. The task, uh, change the task by changing the rules. Um, we can make it easier or harder for people with those tasks. Can they be challenged a little bit more? Changing the timings or the duration of the activity. Um, we can have one that's really long to start with and then a really short one and we change it round. Um, again, speed it up or slow it down, alter the ways that we score. Um, you know, if they catch the ball uh, with, with a right hand, that might be two points. If they catch the ball with the left hand, it could be three. If they catch them together, both hands is in both hands, it could be one point. You know, just again, be a little bit creative in the way that you, you work with people and set out those tasks. And again, uh, certainly for the people that you're working with at the moment, for young people, they come up with some great rules um, to change the task as well. Um, so again, it doesn't always have to rely on your shoulders to change it. In, embrace the, the creativity of the young people you're working with and they come up with some amazing rules and ways of changing the game. Equipment, again, make sure there's a variety of equipment um, that you're using. So. You know, if you're working, if you if you're doing a football session, is the different sizes of, of footballs you can bring in? Um, could you use balloons? Could you use tennis balls? Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be a standard football. It, it helps people be a little bit more creative in what they do. So make sure you have um, a, a a different set of equipment. And same with tennis rackets. If you're doing a tennis racket uh, or tennis session, not everybody can get a ball. With, with with a tennis racket, um, could you use something different? And if they're finding it easy, why why not give them a cricket bat? Why not give them a rounders bat? Um, you know, change it round for them, challenge them in, in what they do. So do have a variety of equipment there, and it doesn't always have to be sports equipment, like you says there. It could be something that, that is that is um, a little bit more challenging. Uh, I delivered a work this workshop to the IQAs and the tutors uh, back in the early March. I had tennis balls and um, and plastic cups uh, for games. Um, it doesn't always have to be um, the standard sports equipment. People, um, changing the people around to take part. Um, again, can there be a leader? Is there different activities, small groups, large groups? You know, it doesn't have to be 4v4. Could it be, could it be 3v5? You know, it gives a different dimension to the game and doesn't have to always be, be equal. Um, does it have to be a physical contact? Can they go non-physical um, in what they do with the people? Um, and again, that can be quite a challenging and different mindset for a lot of people. So just just think about how you do this and what you can do. I've always said again that the, the creativity on games, what you do to make it challenging, inclusive, it, it's by the power of what you can do um, and how you work with people. Um, that's where it stops. So the more you learn, 
the more you engage with other coaches and, and learn different ideas, the more creative you will be and the more confident you will be of working inclusivity. So don't stop that learning ever. Um, and, and certainly go out there and embrace um, different thoughts and different ideas. Any thoughts, any questions on, on that step process? Because it is, is a foundation for, for definitely working with people with, with disabilities. Just drop anything in, any questions in, in, the, in the chat box. I see some of you want the, uh, the copy of this, which is absolutely fine. It's no problems. And again, I'm quite happy um, if you want any support or help on working with people with disabilities or inclusion, um, then yeah, I'm more than happy. Just just drop me a line. Um, and I'm happy to support that. It's not a problem at all. Okay, we'll move on. So, Adrian, just sorry, hey, just quickly to jump in, mate. Um, for those of us for a copy of this, I have just screenshotted it into the chat box, and it's still saying sending. Um, so, it should at some point, hopefully, uh, complete the sending in, in the box, and then you can just copy it, download it from that chat box. Oh, mate, that's why you're in the chat box booth. You're the main man. <laughs> Cheers, David. Okay. Um, using the chat box or the mics, can you tell me what an open activity is? So going back to that inclusion spectrum, and we talked about those setting the scenes and abilities, um, what is an open activity? Anybody got any ideas? Just wait for any chat box to come through or again on the mic. There's that open activity to uh, participants, all participants from gate. Yeah, Jordan, well done. Everyone can join. Uh, Katie, can I put you up on that one that everyone can join in before any adjustments? It's actually anyone can join in even if you made adjustments. Sometimes you have to make adjustments for everybody to join in. Um, so, for instance, if you had an activity um, where you had wheelchair users and visually impaired users, you have to make some adjustments um, to that activity um, to, to help everybody out. Yeah, so everyone involved, you've all got that. Having fun, not necessarily challenging everybody. Enables a group leader, coach, to volunteer, identify what, what participants can do. And it's a great warm up. So my challenge to you now is I'm going to uh, describe a game and I want you to think about that and again drop it in the chat box or talk over the mic. How can you make this an open activity? So and it's a great warm up activity what everybody can do. Um, so I call it uh, cups and saucers. People call it dishes and domes. Um, so think about that activity. And how do you make that an open activity for people um, who are wheelchair users? visually impaired um, and able-bodied. So they're your three parties, the three groups that are, are playing that activity. How can you make that open activity for all those people? Drop some ideas in the chat box or put that then talk ourselves over the mic. Be brave if you want to talk. Well, if you're uh, happy to to keep Mr. You, uh, could you go through them again? I've got visually impaired, but I didn't visually impaired, them. wheelchair users, <laughs> and able-bodied. So there, you three go. You three. Well, you, 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 yeah. How are you going to make dishes and domes or cups and saucers an open activity? What changes would you have to make? Think of the step model as well. What parts of the step model might you, you use? Visually impaired, brighter colour cones. Yep, James. Doing it in pairs. Yep, use larger cones. Yep, nice one, Heather, actually. That's a good one. Add in a ball so they can throw them, so I can turn. Yeah. What about the space? No, do we need to change the space? Yeah, well done, Katie. 
Okay, what about the actual task? Or the people? What else would we need to do? Maybe. Yep, James, bigger space. Create more teams. Yep. What about the speed of the game? Would we ask participants to walk? Would they still be running around? Would you want to change that? Yeah, well done. That's the idea. Now you're getting the idea. We want to, be, want to slow the game down, make sure it meets the needs of everybody um, by just by changing those rules of walking. Um, and again, you could put a, a different time limit on that. So instead of doing a minute, it could be 30 seconds um, in what they do. Definitely. And again, you say you use different equipment, you've changed the game around, big cones, usable, uh, brighter colours. Excellent. Well done. So again, open activity is really good for a, a warm up or a cool down game as well. And it starts to identify the needs. So again, we're going to use the same process. What's a modified activity? Anybody got any ideas? Oh, I like that, Beth. That's good. I'm going to steal that, Beth. Thank you. We're all magpies in the coaching world. So modified activity. Any ideas for that? What's that one? Again, you can be more welcome to, to open up on, uh, across the mics or put it into the chat box. Any thoughts? I mean, through, here we go. For high achievers, different rules for different people. Yeah. James, um, yeah, well done, Heather. It's exactly that. Participants do the same activity, but it's modified, adapted for individuals to ensure everyone is being challenged. So for all throwing and catching a ball in pairs, we might change the equipment, um, might be a smaller ball, might be a large ball for people that are, are struggling, but we're all doing the same activity, um, throwing and catching, but we're changing distance, we might change equipment, we might change the way that we're throwing it. Um, all of those things, again, think about a step model, um, would change and challenge people in what they do. But nobody would feel different because we're all doing that same activity. Um, but we're doing it in a way that is going to meet their needs and challenge them to their tipping point. The last one on this one is parallel activity. Again, just drop it in the uh, chat box. What's a parallel activity? I will say this is the one that most people get confused about. So I'm looking for the high achievers on these chat box or open mic. <laughs> okay, James. James, you're very creative with the old um, emojis. Yeah, I actually know I cheer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chat box has gone stupid again. Oh, was it? Yeah, I'll just keep it. mic, mate. We're only on for another five or ten minutes, so I've got another video to show, so you're more than welcome to just keep it on the mic if it's easier. Um, right. Two or more tasks that can easily be performed. Sorry, mate. Yeah, two activities running at the same time. One for the higher, one for the lower. Yeah. So... Just picking up on the two activities, it doesn't have to be two activities. It can be a number of activities. So, um, for instance, if we I'm going to go back to, to the workshop delivery, if we did sitting volleyball, you're absolutely right in what you say, uh, Heather. It's about their ability groups. So we might have a low ability group that's just rolling the ball to each other, um, sitting down with no net. The next group could be a low net sitting down and they might have a different ball doesn't bounce as much um, and they're allowed a number of bounces before they play it back the third group might be might be the, the ones who can play sitting volleyball really well and are playing volleyball so it depends on the abilities that you've got and you split that by that number so you could have low achievement you could have middle you could have upper middle you could have top performing 
it doesn't have to be two it could be a number of activities that meet the abilities and the needs of the participants you've got so don't worry about having a number of at all so that's parallel any questions so far everybody okay because i want to just summarize this now because we, we, this is about again three minutes long so it'll just bring us nicely towards the end of this this session well done Camille. i like that yeah I tend to use three sessions activities and split in the court either side superb great stuff right so i'm going to play this last video it's about three minutes long this will bring that whole inclusion spectrum together it will visually show you the different activities as well and explain them so again if there's any problems with sound or visual quality just drop it in the chat box or just again put it over the mic and we can get it sorted for you so just sit back and watch this the activity inclusion model is a practical activity centered approach to the inclusion of all young people in physical education and school sport the activity inclusion model provides different methods of supporting inclusion by changing the way activities are delivered this maximizes the potential of all young people involved the model consists of four approaches to the delivery of physical activity in sport open modified parallel and specific activities open activities are simple naturally inclusive activities that the entire group can do with little or no modification for example warm-ups and cool downs provide an ideal platform where everyone can play other examples of open activities are unstructured play, individual skill development, and continuous activities such as throwing and catching games, where individual differences are not emphasized. Modified activities are when everyone does the same activity, but adaptations are made to support the inclusion of or to challenge one or more members of the group. Modifications or adaptations can be applied to an activity to support young people to acquire or develop their skills. Or for those who need no, to be challenged to yeah, I'm Modified by applying STEP. Parallel activities are when participants are grouped according to ability in order to provide different entry points into the same activity. For example, young people can be grouped in different versions of the same activity at a level appropriate to their ability, ensuring all young people are challenged. They can practice in groups based on ability or explore ways of practicing different skills. Specific activities are when either as an individual or a group, particular pupils participate in a purposefully planned activity, which focuses on the specific needs of those participants. This might be so a pupil can work on individual skill development that will make later integration into the class more successful, or because they're training for a specific event or sport, which might include a disability-specific activity. Within physical education, specific activity should not be the most common approach of the activity inclusion model used, and should only be used if you are not able to use an open, modified, or parallel activity. There are four factors which influence inclusion for each participant ability, activity, impairment, and the setting. These factors will influence which activity inclusion model approach you use. The activity inclusion model should be considered in every lesson you teach. Remember the model is not a series of progressions. At any stage in your lessons, you may move from one area of the model to another. So that's that's the end of uh, this uh, hopefully it was a masterclass for you um, in, in what we do in the inclusion model um, 